please state and spell your first and last name just to begin. Uh, Bradley E. Sturgeon, uh, B R A D L E Y E, is in Eugene. Sturgeon, S T U R G E O N. Um, when did you first meet Doc, and where were you when you first met Doc? I first met Doc when I came to visit campus on an interview. Um, he was the one who picked me up at the airport uh, up in Moline. I remember him waiting for me as I was getting off the plane. Um, we had a nice hour plus drive back from the Quad Cities and uh, that was our first meeting. A nice opportunity to talk to him for an hour about things going on here at the college. Um, what was your first impression of Doc? He had kind of a fatherly kind of appearance to him. Uh, he was kind of always looking out for you. Uh, he seemed to be concerned to make sure that everything was okay, that you were comfortable, and other, uh, you know, sort of, yeah, sort of something your dad might do for you, make sure that everything's going okay, his number one priority. And did this first impression hold true throughout the time you knew Doc? Um, yeah, I think it was pretty consistent. It became less apparent, but I think uh, Doc was always in the background, if not just thinking about the individual, but thinking about the, the group. And so I think he was very concerned about the department and about the college and these sorts of things. So it was... Uh, yeah, it just sort of took on a different form as you got to know him more and more. But yeah, generally he he had that fatherly kind of um, persona to him. Um, can you kind of expand on the fatherly persona? Like, um, was he just like that to you know the colleagues? Was he like that to students? Um. um well, I actually I guess. Um, one of the things I remember, I stayed at the manor when I first came for my interview, and it was actually one of these very cold days, and I just had a sport coat. I didn't actually bring a heavy jacket because it really wasn't that cold out. Um, it wasn't true winter just yet, um, and I was not necessarily prepared for the very cold weather. And so without him ever saying or asking or whatever, when he came to pick me up, to go to dinner that evening, he brought a, a big red coat with him. Uh, so again, he's just trying to sort of look out. Now, yeah, I think he did that to everybody, but he really did treat everybody a little bit differently. He was very kind of, uh, um, he would give you what you needed, right? And so I think, you know, like with students, um, he could hug students left and right um, and it was because that's sort of what they needed and what they wanted uh, and again in that fatherly kind of figure if I tried to hug a student it might be kind of weird but he he had this way of uh, you know having such a close caring relationship with everybody that it was pretty common for him to just kind of you know hug on you uh, I don't know if I ever hugged him though I don't know if I ever got to that point. Maybe I didn't need a hug, and I think that's kind of the thing, is that he gave you essentially what you needed. And if I never looked like I needed a hug, then I probably never got one. <laughs> um, what was Doc like as a professor? Uh, did you ever have the opportunity to you know, watch him interact with students in the classroom and outside of the classroom? Um, when I got here, Doc had essentially shifted over to being what would be a lab manager. Um, and so, again, he was about the most highly qualified lab manager you could ever have. But essentially, he knew where everything was. Um, he would spend a lot of time in the lab uh, when, you know, because he would set up the labs and then he would kind of hang out and make sure everything was going well. So I never saw him lecture, per se, but I, I think I can, I can see his style of lecturing was very detail-oriented, uh, continually looking at the students to make sure they were understanding what he was saying and pausing. Um, you know, as a, as a faculty member, you, 
you have to make a choice about how slow you go because you know if, if people aren't getting it you could always slow down but then you compromise the amount of material you're covering in the class and so if you do kind of try to cater to every student in the class you tend to not cover as much material and I don't think he was ever bothered by the fact that maybe he didn't get to something um, a lot of faculty will have an agenda today I've got four pages of notes kind of like me right and but actually I think I probably have picked up a little bit of his style and that I don't really care if I get through my notes um, and he, he didn't either he was more responding to what was going on in the classroom environment um, um, so um, did Doc ever talk about you know what kind of interested him in coming to Monmouth College and what inter interested him in just chemistry in general I don't know if he ever talked about that or not well I think you find out that his family his father Lester Keefe was a chemistry professor um, and that Doc had always been around chemistry. I think there's some good historical pictures of him mimicking.